This morning, President Trump's at the White House, but his West Wing is looking more like a ghost town. Stephen Miller, the president's top speechwriter and a policy advisor, joining a growing list of close aides infected by the virus. He has been uh, self-quarantining for five days, but nevertheless tested positive based on a prior exposure. I talked to him uh, just before coming to air, uh, and he's doing well. His wife, Katie Miller, Vice President Pence's communications director, contracted the virus last May and tested negative for a new infection on Tuesday. Still, she left Salt Lake City, the site of tonight's VP debate, out of an abundance of caution. Miller is the 18th White House aide or ally to test positive, and while much attention is focused on that Rose Garden event 11 days ago, two other indoor clusters have become focal points. The president's debate prep session, six positives in that group, including Hope Hicks, Kellyanne Conway, and Chris Christie. And the press shop, in addition to press secretary Kaylee McEnany, four press aides now positive. Also impacted, Joint Chiefs Chairman General Mark Milley and other top military chiefs now quarantining at home after a top Coast Guard official tested positive. President Trump's physician says the president is experiencing no symptoms, but the president's efforts to minimize the threat are infuriating some of the families of the more than 210,000 Americans who have died from COVID. Don't let it dominate. Don't let it take over your lives. Don't let that happen. Amanda Klutz's husband, Broadway star Nick Cordero, died three months ago. Nick didn't let it. It wasn't a choice. And it dominated his life. It dominated my life. It dominated our family's lives. Have some empathy. And even as President Trump receives world-class care, he insists we are learning to live with COVID. While falsely comparing it to the flu, writing in part, flu season is coming up. Many people every year, sometimes over 100,000, and despite the vaccine, die from the flu. Are we going to close down our country? No. A post removed by Facebook and flagged by Twitter as misleading and potentially harmful. In fact, more people have already died from coronavirus in the U.S. than those who have died from the flu in the past five seasons combined. The president himself acknowledging the difference to journalist Bob Woodward back in February. It's also more deadly than your, you know, your even your strenuous flus. Joe Biden weighing in on the campaign trail Tuesday in Pennsylvania. This pandemic is not a red state or blue state issue. This virus doesn't care whether you live or where you live, what political party you belong to. It affects us all. It will take anyone's life. It's a virus. It's not a political weapon. Biden in that speech on the value of wearing masks, saying it's not a political statement, it's a scientific recommendation. And this morning, the New York Times reports that some White House staff members are wondering whether the president's behavior was spurred by a cocktail of drugs that he's been taking to treat the virus, including dexamethasone, that steroid that can cause mood swings and give a false level of energy and a sense of euphoria.